welcome to the first uh, episode of the Digital Sandbox of the Voc Talk Cafe. Um, it's, uh, we call it a place where trade teachers test uh, digital, digital tools. It's a formula that's a bit different from uh, our usual formula. But before we get to that, uh, on the website, on the image, you see the, the, the setup for the food sector, but you'll find a page for the digital open sandbox where you will find recordings and summaries of previous episodes, a link to the uh, archive, uh, the meetings agenda, the minutes, the attendance. You'll see the calendar as well that you can insert in your personal uh, Google or um, Outlook calendar and a uh, link to the resources uh, used in the meeting. This is uh, the first episode of a new series inside a new project. So we are very interested in your feedback and your information uh, to make sure that this corresponds to uh, what your needs are. So we would pretty very much like appreciate your feedback. Today's episode is entitled, What if the students made the PowerPoint? Um, because we want to explore uh, collaborative uh, work from the students. Goals for today are to review a few concepts behind uh, that idea of student collaborative work, showcase Microsoft, Microsoft PowerPoint as a platform to foster students' collaboration, and give you time to create an actual collaborative document that you can explore and test uh, individual options. And it would be super cool if we had time to get back and uh, ex uh, share a few tips that were discovered. The presentation is going to be brief, uh, 15 minutes, and that I'm here. I'm hearing my debit of voice. Maybe it's going to be only 10 minutes um, to present today's tools. Uh, but uh, and after that, the uh, interaction or exploration period where you can test and create and share discoveries is not going to be recorded to keep the place a safe space. All right, let's get started. So as we said, the question today is, what if the students made the PowerPoint? But before we will get into the details of how to go about it, uh, let's consider a few advantages of making students collaborate. It has a big impact on the learning. When students are teaching each other, they're actually creating neural pathways in their brain to access their long-term memory faster. So making them teach each other is a good way to make them retain more clearly the information and make it more available. It has a big impact on class management because it keeps the students active. And when they're active, they're more likely to be engaged. And when they're engaged, they're less likely to be disruptive and not follow uh, your indications. It has also a big impact, if that's from my personal experience, on the teacher effort and the stress. Collaborative work requires lots of work before the class gets started but at the same but once the activity is launched the teacher can pretty much sit in the passenger seat and become a co-pilot a guide accompany the students in their work instead of having to lead the whole uh, group what we're not talking about activities where a student can develop easily technical uh, technical skills or dexterity or a mastering of a tool we're talking about Check, uh, developing their ability to communicate, their critical thinking, their ability to do research, solve problem, be creative, their digital literacy, because in many trades, we're going to be using tools that they will have to use there, either as a worker or as a citizen. And of course, their metacognition, because it, it's a good way also to bring them to reflect on their learning process, how they memorize and stuff. Uh, the kind, what can you make students do um, when you uh, in this kind of activities? It's excellent for brainstorming. If you're doing a lecture and you want students to take notes, they can take notes in a single document that everybody has access to. Work planning, determining the steps that they have to do, put them in the right order. Build a presentation to showcase the results of their re research. Maybe it's a timeline about the history of your trade. Build a portfolio of their uh, work and, uh, for example, are good examples of tasks that you can assign there. 
you have to think about it before and a lot in advance. Uh, while you design an activity like this, you, you need to think of accessibility, make sure that like for this slide, the text is dark on a, 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 a pale background, the include image descriptions when it's necessary, use fonts that are easy to see, to read, don't put too many bells and whistles so the people, students are not lost by their, don't lose their focus. Think of allowing multiple means of action and expression when if what you're looking for is if the students have acquired and put the information in a way that it can be shared with the group. So whether it's written text, it's a voice recording, collection of images, a video, it doesn't really matter. So you can let them uh, have options there. And of course, you'll also want to include multiple levels of performance to make sure that it is clear that what the students have to do, I'll talk to that more uh, a bit more later, but also keep the talented, skilled students busy so they don't get bored because the tasks was easier for them. So you can include levels of uh, extra. Don't forget to provide instructions and training on the tool that they're gonna use. Maybe it's the first time they use PowerPoint, so you need to make sure they are not slowed down by their not knowing of the tools to use. Make the objectives and the tasks clear. I've already said that. And as the students work, make sure that they understood the, indicate, uh, the, the instructions that you've given them. Visit every section to make sure that they're actually working on their designated area. Let them test stuff and even fail sometimes. Um, the people are learning from their mistakes. So uh, that's that's okay. And you have to accept that it's going to be a bit messy, that they will not create what you would have done. And, and your attention needs to focus on what you wanted them to learn, not the quality of the, uh, of the finished product by itself. It's a learning ground. It's not uh, a goal in itself. How is it done? First, I've talked a lot about it, about it extensively. You imagine a collaborative and learning activity. Then you create the necessary documents, a, a collaboration space, maybe individual worksheets, if it applies to the tasks that you pick, the tasks that you pick, and give instructions and guidelines where the learning objective, the procedure, the steps in reaching the set objective, and the success criteria differentiated, if possible, are clearly detailed. And then you share what you have prepared according to the needs. You can do it usually directly from the app or website, depending on the tool that you select, or through the learning management system. We'll get to that a bit later. You monitor student progress as they go. As they, as they go. And you need to have planned a synthesis activity. It makes no sense to make the students work together if they don't put the result of their work together later. It can take many forms. They can discuss their finding. It can be presented to the public. If there's a TV in the hall of your center where the work can be showcased, the options are endless. Next slide. Let's use Microsoft PowerPoint as an example. First, you need, so now we're going to get to the technical part of it. First, you need to get into your Office 365 account. You search or type or go directly to Office 365 login, type in, select your ID. As you see, I have many, enter your password. And here, if you're on a school computer, you want to select no to make sure that when you're done, the computer doesn't remain logged in. Next step, open the PowerPoint app. So at the end of the process, you see that there are menu to access more um, applications. You open PowerPoint. Once you're in PowerPoint, you see at the top left, you can go scroll for more themes. Pick something simple that has a light background. So I'll pick the minimalist presentation it helps keep the learners focused. Once you've done that, you name the project. 
I called it changing air filters or experience. And you make sure that it is in the place where you're gonna be, be finding it easily. Here we go. You can go make sure that on your drive or OneDrive, they're in the place where you can find them. In PowerPoint, artificial intelligence will help you make it look fancy. You see I'm clicking here on designer and it's offering me a few different displays that are way more designer like, but I can also paste an image right in it and it's going to give me options to integrate that image. So now we've created a title. So when you're, the students open the document, they know what we're going to be talking about. Then you create a work slide. Think of a, a worksheet where each individual students are going, a student is going to be working and you duplicate it. You, write, you can right click on the tile and select duplicate slide or if you prefer keyboard shortcuts, you just do control, control D and that will give you an extra a copy of the slide that's been there. After you go in and you personalize each slide for each of the students in your group, that's a bit tedious, but make it clear and easy to find. So to make sure that your students are gonna be working on their designated space and not everywhere. But there is a bit of instruction that says there, replace this text with two comments about your experience, include one thing you would do again and one thing you would avoid, add a photo of your work. It's a reminder of the instructions. If you put too much stuff there, you're gonna get your students disoriented. If there is a slide, then you delete all the slides that were in the template that you, you used, you delete them. If you use the template from the internet, like from slide carnivals, and there's an attribution, attribution slide at the end, please leave it in so the, the designers do get the credit. Then we're almost done. You add the students as collaborators. You can select them one by one, but you can also copy paste from a list of emails. You add a little message so the, for, for here's our collaborative document for today's class. And then you just click send and the students are gonna get uh, individual notification. Depending on the learning management system that you use, you're gonna get different ways to do this directly in Teams, in Moodle, in Google Classroom, et cetera, et cetera. But this is how you do it if you don't, like that's the basic way that you can do it in any system, uh, either on a website in an app or in an app associated with a suite. I've showed you Microsoft, uh, what's it called, PowerPoint. Uh, you can use Padlet. You can use uh, different various whiteboards. Uh, Microsoft has one, Miro. There's, uh, the, it can be used in Canva as well. If you wanna make the world, the, the work of the students public, you can use a Google site if you're on a Google platform or Microsoft Sway, because you can add the students as collaborators there. And of course, uh, Google and Canva also offers slides templates. And this is where we would end the, the recording of the presentation because we'll move to the text te testing and experimentation part of our session. Um, if you are watching the recording, thank you for joining us. Feel free to be there live next time. As I was saying at the beginning of the presentation, we would very much appreciate your feedback on what we've, uh, on the Voctalk Cafe en général and on this particularly new series that we call Digital Open Sandbox. You can put your comments in the exit ticket that, uh, is, that you have the link uh, right in the chat. Oh. If you have ideas for future uh, episodes um, of the Vokta Cafe, either for the digital open sandbox, the re regular episodes that are on um, sp trade specific uh, topic, uh, there is a form that you can uh, that we ask you to fill to uh, submit your ideas, and we would like you to be involved in presenting those ideas, but 
we can talk about and help we can help you build that presentation or we can uh do it uh, for you this is our uh contact information i'm sorry uh, we both have emails i want to mention that it is easy to uh, contact either myself or my colleague of the vc vocational training james Byrne, to our website at recivt.uc.ca. There's an instant chat button. If you have a small problem you want to solve right away, you can book appointments in our uh, calendar or, of course, email us as well. Robin, you, the best way to contact you is by email? By email or using the uh, chat, the, the, the instant chat feature in vt.proceed.ca or coming to any VogTalk cafe. Always here. Pretty much there every Monday, unless it's a holiday. The uh, next episode of the Vodka Cafe is next Monday, February 5th. And it's going to be opening a new section that doesn't really, a new series that doesn't really have a title yet. We're thinking Teacher's Corner, uh, where we're going to explore teaching tools that are uh, related to uh, uh, vocational training specifically. So tune in next Monday. 3 p.m. on the Apreco website.